well, it is 10 o'clock. So if you are good, Tim, I'm just going to go ahead and get things started. Sure. Looks like we have a couple more who joined us. So good morning, everyone. This is Dana Myers with Southeast Community College, and I would like to thank all of you for joining us this morning for How to Thrive in a VUCA World. Before we begin, I wanna let everyone know that you have joined us with the ability to manage your audio and video to help create a more interactive session. You are welcome to contribute to the conversation throughout the webinar. However, we do ask that you remain on mute while in listening mode. We will also have a Q&A session following the presentation where you are welcome to ask questions or submit your question in the Zoom Q&A feature or even in the chat feature, and we will answer as many of those as our time allows. With that being said, I would like to introduce you to Tim Matasio. Tim's an executive coach and consultant after beginning his career as an attorney. He has, begin, he has been an executive and business coach and consultant since 1995 and is a member of the International Coach Federation and the Institute of Coaching. Tim has coached people in all walks of life and has worked with sole proprietors and large corporations. And with that, Tim, I will turn everything over to you. Thank you, Dana, and welcome everybody. I, um, I have an invitation to start, and of course, all invitations leave people free to say yes or no. Uh, and so my invitation is if you are willing that you uh, join us with your video so we can see your face. And um, again, if, if that's not something you're um, uh, comfortable with, that's fine too. I'll we'll just get started. But if you are, uh, feel free to do that. Crystal, hello. All right, thank you. And who else? Oh, Lydia. Hello, Lydia. And there's Susan. Susan Rocker. How are you, Susan? Good. And I know you're all on mute, so I'll just kind of talk at you. Uh, and. Um, and, and I'm actually going to, I know Kara's here today as well. Kara is a, um, a collaborator, collaborator uh, of mine. And we're working on something that I'll be talking about a little later today. So thank you for being here, Kara. And um, I want to give each of you that would like to an opportunity to share why you are here today, what you want to get out of this. Um, what interested you uh, in uh, joining us today so that uh, I can just get a little idea of, you know, what you're here for and, and so hopefully tailor the presentation as well as I can. So, um, you know, Crystal or Lydia or Susan um, or Sue, Jennifer and Francine and Cece, if you, uh, you want to share, please feel free to do that right now. I just think it's such a different time that we're living in right now. And I just feel like anything that we have that I can get to help prepare me and help me understand what um, is ahead or what I'm experiencing and how to deal with it and deal with others is always helpful. So I just thought it was a good opportunity to learn something more. Beautiful. Thank you, Crystal. Anybody else? Feel free. All right, well, going once, going twice. All right, so we just had our first experiment in the world of VUCA. And the experiment was, will people talk? Will people respond? And guess what? 
I didn't know. <laughs> I did not know whether anybody would say anything. I didn't know if there was total silence, one person would say something, two people would say something, no way of knowing. And that was actually planned to just demonstrate what kind of, what, what happens when we're in an uncertain situation. Now, again, I'm gonna ask several questions and if you feel comfortable responding, great. If you don't, that's fine too. Was anybody a little uncomfortable during that pause? Was anybody? Oh, good. Lydia. Yeah. Okay. Oh, oh, sorry. I, I'm cutting in. I also was because I'm here to record and mute anybody uh -huh. who doesn't have good mic discipline, and I'm not. Yeah. And I have no idea what this conference is actually about, so <laughs> I couldn't really comment on it. So there's your uncomfortable pause. Beautiful. And that pause was uncomfortable, right, Luke? Oh, yeah, because do you want participation from IT? Because here right. it is. Right. And Lydia, you were uncomfortable as well, right? And I, I see you, that you were nodding yes. And Lydia, would you mind just saying a little bit about why you were uncomfortable? I don't know, because I felt like I was kind of nervous to respond. And then I didn't know if other people were going to respond. And I was like, if it gets longer than like a 10 second pause, you're like, what do you do? Like. <laughs> Do I speak? Does someone else speak? So, yeah. Excellent. Excellent. And so the VUCA world, one of the big parts of the VUCA world is uncertainty. And what do we do when we don't know what's going to happen? And what do we do with our awkward feeling or our awkward pause or our unknowingness? So that's really awesome. All right, so I just, I, I thank you both and I wanna invite everybody else to feel free to jump in. There's no wrong answer. I'm relatively friendly. And uh, I wanna just introduce this concept to, to get started called VUCA. And so since the seminar is how to thrive in a VUCA world, I thought I'd better talk about VUCA for a few minutes. And uh, VUCA is our first four-letter word of the day. So we're actually going to be talking about four four-letter words. And um, one five-letter word right at the end, all right? Four four-letter words and one five-letter word. So VUCA is a term that it's an acronym and it stands for volatility, uncertainty, complexity and ambiguity. All big words, obviously it's a term that was created by some uh, college professors out in California. <laughs> and so uh, they, uh, you know, they needed to write a paper. So they put together something and they called it the VUCA world. And um, volatility, just a quick word about volatility is just rapid and unpredictable change. So volatile stock market means it goes up and down. A volatile person is someone who's uh, quiet and happy one minute and explosive and angry the next. It's, it's rapid changing, up and down. You never know what's gonna happen. It's like, whoa, a roller coaster. Roller coasters are very volatile. And then the uncertainty, we've already kind of had a little taste of it, a little flavor of it, is when you don't know what's coming. You know, it's, it's just, you're just, you know, you know, you don't know. And the brain loves to know. That's one thing human beings all over the world want to know is what's coming. The C is complexity. So think of complexity. The more complex something is, is the more parts that have to work together to make something work. The more connections. So the brain's very complex organism, very complex. Well, there's all those connections. And so complexity is about being interconnected. And this leads to that, and that leads to this, and this leads to that. And it's hard to kind of like figure it all. How do, how do we make a change? Because it's so complex. And amb ambiguity is awesome because ambiguity is a little bit about what Lydia shared that when she was faced with this uncertainty, she shared that she was ambiguous about what to do. 
Should she share? Should she wait for someone else to share? And so there was this, you, you were kind of like torn a little bit, right, Lydia? A little bit like didn't know, and I could go this way, I could go this way. So ambigu ambiguous means there's cues out there, but you really don't know how to read them. Or there's more than one way to read a particular cue. Welcome, Roxy. And, uh, and so um, this is the world, the VUCA world. And just for fun, again, just for fun and just to get people participating, when do you suppose this term VUCA was first introduced in our culture? What year do you want to say? There's no wrong answer. Just, just take a guess. I'm just going to when I initially signed up for this, I would have said probably this year, but now as you're talking more, I'm thinking maybe it was longer ago than that. Okay, really cool. That was Crystal. And I saw in the chat that Francine put in in the 80s, right, Francine? Yeah, okay, that's good. And really interesting insight by Crystal there. Um, and could you say that again, Crystal? I want everybody to get that. I, when I signed up, I would have thought that VUCA was a new term associated with COVID. So yes. February, March of this year. Yes. But then something changed. What was it? Sorry, I'm having a hard time unmuting. Sorry. Um, just as you were talking about things and sharing about it, it made me realize that maybe it had been around for longer than what I assumed. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. So anyway, this term came out, Francine is actually absolutely right. It came out in 1987. So before 9-11, certainly uh, way before COVID and George Floyd and before the crash of 2008 and nine on you know, this, the, the, uh, the banking crisis and the, the monetary and all this turbulence in the world that's happened in the last 10, 20 years, this term was created long before that. So what does that say to you? And I, I know this is a this is a tough question because you can't answer it with a yes or a no. But but uh, but what does that say to you that this term was invented that 33 years ago? What do you, what what do you hear in that? Our current trials always feel like the worst trials ever. Luke, Luke, you are the man, Luke Pawlowski. What else? Who else? What, what, what does that say to you? This term's been around since 1987. And Luke said, it seems like the current problems what again Luke the current problems are well I said trials but trials. whatever whatever our current trials are they seem like the worst ones ever so yes yes it seem like the worst ones ever beautiful oh good here we go from Francine thank you thank you Francine for your participation there is always something to deal with yes 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 I'm writing these things down because I'm learning and I'm doing research for my book. And I, and I just want to share that Kara is helping me with this and talk a little bit more about that later. But um, there's always something, you know, to, to deal with always something going on. And um, like Crystal said, you know, we're dealing with something unique right now. And, and, and uh, um, I think it was Sue, I was talking to her before, um, you know, we started, she was talking about, um, you know, we're in these times where there's a lot going on and, and uh, just wanted to get some ideas. And yet, actually, these times have been going on for a long time. And you might even say that the world is a VUCA world, and it always has been. Yikes. <laughs> the world's always been volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous. Yikes. So who here is waiting for COVID to go away and everything can go back to normal? Just kind of raise your hand or you, or you just all can't wait until COVID goes away and you can go back to normal. Lydia, yes? 
Yeah, Lydia, oh, that'll be nice. I can go to the, I, not that you go to bars, Lydia, but I can go, you know, party a little bit more and I can have fun. Francine, for sure. <laughs> well, I don't want to burst any bubbles and I don't know what's going to happen. That's the beauty of uncertainty. And we don't know. We don't know whether we could just go back to the bar someday. So the question here is whether you're a person or you're in an organization or, or, you know, I mean, obviously you're a person, but whether you're dealing with this personally or whether you're dealing with this as a part of an organization, the question is, is really how to be effective and how to thrive in the world. And it just happens to be, this is one way to kind of categorize the world called VUCA world. And so what I'm going to do today is give you my second four-letter word now. Get ready. How are we doing for time, Dana? We have about 45 minutes. Perfect. So right where we're supposed to be. Um, the second four-letter word is how to thrive in a VUCA world or how to thrive in the world. Are you ready for it? Here it is. Write it down because if you don't, you'll forget it. No, I'm just kidding. You won't forget it. Now, who here is familiar with a term called MASH? Just kind of nod your head if you've heard the term MASH. Perfect. No, you've never heard MASH. Okay. I'm old, but MASH used to be a TV show. Does anybody remember when MASH was on TV? Kara's kind of remembering it. <laughs> Francine, yes. Okay, Francine, I'm going to dialogue with you through the chat room. This is going to be fun. Um, Francine, what does MASH, when the, the MASH, the old MASH show, what did that stand for? What was that an acronym for? Francine's going, oh no, he wants me to respond. This is creating volatility and uncertainty for Francine. Francine, I don't, I don't really want to do that. I'm sorry. I don't mean to do that at all. Who knows, um, what MASH stood for back in the day? I just Googled it. <laughs> oh, Kara. Oh, 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 here's Francine. Shoot. Okay, no, it doesn't have shoot in it. Um, military Ambulatory Hospital. Francine, you're awesome. You got one of them right. Military Ambulatory, Military Ambulatory Hospital. Okay, so Kara, what do you got? What does it stand for? Mobile Army Surgical Hospital. Right, Mobile Army Surgical Hospital. And so this are all these folks um, were uh, taking care of people in Korea. That's what the show's about. And they had to take their hospital on the run sometimes and move it from place to place, depending upon the bombing. Talk about a VUCA world. And, uh, and so they came up with this thing called MASH. Now my MASH does not necessarily equate to that MASH, but um, it, the first key concept and how to deal with a VUCA world is mobile, mobile. And so I'm going to put four wheels on how to deal with the, with the VUCA world. And then I'm going to ask you all to put more uh, as we build this car. Okay, we're, so we're using an analogy of a car. And we're saying that if we've got um, a car, we're going to need to build it. And what we're building is how to be effective and how to thrive not just survive, oh, I gotta survive, I don't know what's coming, ah! No, 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 not that, but thrive in a, in a VUCA world. And so the first thing we're gonna need to be as people and as companies is mobile, mobile. So you're gonna need to be able to work from anywhere. You're gonna be able to, you're gonna work from anywhere and Dana, Dana and I, I remember the first time I talked to her, she was on her car phone. She was, she was, and we were creating this thing. And I was saying, Dana, this is perfect. You're mobile and you're working. And, and this is how to be effective. This is a key part of, um, of, of being, uh, of, of thriving in this world. We, we're going to have to move. We don't know where we're going to be working. That's okay. I can work from home. I can work from quote unquote work. I can work on quote unquote vacation. I can work from anywhere and it's not gonna stop me. So mobility and just being able to work from anywhere and mobility also from the standpoint of being mobile um, 
creatures, like being able to move, like quick, nimble, mobile. So we're gonna to need to get in better shape physically. Yikes. <laughs> it actually makes you feel better too, but it's gonna be important. It's gonna be important to thrive in, in an uncertain world because you, you might need to move quickly. And I'm not gonna go a big thing about that, but uh, that's, that, that helps. It helps if you're really um, you know physically fit. Um, and then the other piece of mobility is what I would call being open to growing mentally, emotionally. So there's something in the uh, world today called a fixed mindset or a growth mindset. Has anybody heard those terms? Fixed mindset, growth mindset, right? Good. Thank you. Um, and, and really what's important is that you have what's called a growth mindset, like you're open to moving and changing and moving your ideas around and just being a little more mobile and not just physically, but mentally and emotionally. All right, so that's the M of MASH. The A is agility, agility. We're gonna need to be agile. And that's primarily, primarily mentally. Welcome, Pam, all right. And Roxy, I already said Roxy. Feel free, Pam, Roxy, Jennifer, Diane, and Sue, if you want to participate, to do it by the chat room, uh, or if you want to go off um, um, not being on video and join us via video, we would love to have you. And so what does it mean to be agile? I'm going to open that up. What does it mean to be agile? If you want to write it in the chat, feel free to do that. What comes to your mind when you hear the word agility? Thank you, Francine. Flexible, beautiful. You guys should be writing these contributions down as we go, teaching each other. No, that was fine. Don't worry about the spelling. Flexible. Hi, Pam. And um, if you wanna, if you wanna just uh, chime in, what comes to your mind when you hear the word agile? I think of adaptability as well. Like you can kind of adapt to whatever. Beautiful adaptability. I love that. Those are both really good. Flexible, adaptable, excellent. What else comes to mind in terms of agility? What kind of an athlete, what's the first kind of an athlete that comes to your mind when you think of an athlete who's agile? What sport are they taking part in? Agile. Crystal. I'm showing my age, but I think of um, boxing and Muhammad Ali, but always moving and shifting positions and. Beautiful. That's okay. Muhammad Ali, boxing, moving and shifting positions. Oh, I love that. That's awesome. Who else? Oh, Sue, beautiful, quick. Yes. Beautiful, Sue. Thank you so much. These are all really, really uh, illustrative of what it means to be agile. You've got to be adaptable. You've got to be flexible. You've got to be able to move, shift, maybe your positions. You know, don't be afraid. You come into work one day and you say, we're not going to wear masks. <laughs> and what's everybody doing? We first came out with Fauci first came out. Well, we don't really know that we need to wear masks. And then and then, uh oh, wait a minute. Wear masks. Everybody wear masks. No, no, no. No doubt about it. You must wear masks. And so what did everybody say? Oh, well, why didn't you tell us sooner? You know, well, guess what? He's dealing with something he's never dealt with before. He doesn't know what to do. He's making it up as he goes. He's, he's leading a, 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 a crusade to solve a problem that hasn't been solved before. And so, you know what? You got to switch your position. You got to have the strength to say, I was wrong. I was wrong about that. Let's do this. It's fine. It's okay to be wrong. 
be wrong today as much as you can. Just tomorrow, say, you know what? Yesterday, I was totally wrong. <laughs> I'm switching my position. It's okay. It makes things a lot more fun when it's okay to make a mistake, doesn't it? Anybody here concerned that I'm worried about making a mistake? <laughs> Kara. Kara's going, no, you're clearly not worried about making mistakes. You're making a bunch of them. And it's not that. I just know that mistakes are how you learn. Yeah, mistakes are how you learn. Yeah, 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 yeah. So there's another good one. Agile means you're always learning. Always learning. Always learning. And that's mentally, you know, the brain, I, I got my brain over there. I'm not going to take the time to go get it, but you know, it's got a front, it's got a back, it's got a left, it's got a right. No, I got a brain. It's not attached to my head. It's a, it's a, you know, and um, I sh sometimes show it to people, but anyway, um, you got a front, you got a back, a left and a right. And, you know, it's all got to work together. And, you know, some people are left brain, some people are right brain. Well, guess what? You got to put it all together. We got to use everything. We got to keep learning and being open to it. All right, good. Excellent. We're zooming right along on MASH. The next one, S, synergistic. 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 There's a word. Luke, what does synergistic mean? I'm going to pick on you. You're the only other guy in here, so let's go for it, man. All the different elements have to work well together. All the different elements have to work well together. Beautiful. Luke, let me ask you a question. What do you do when you're working with people you don't like? Well, that's very rare. But, you know, smile and nod a lot. So. Okay. So you pretend. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it, I mean, it, usually it never devolves into a scenario where I want to fix whatever it is I don't like. You yeah. know, that's their thing. So whatever. Right. I will just have a good mood about it and try not to let it get me down. Good. Well, that's good. You're positive. But, you know, um, I'm, you know. Synergistic has something to do with collaboration and collaboration. Um, you know, collaboration isn't always pleasant. And sometimes we get stuck in situations where we're working with people we don't like. You know what I'm saying? Anybody know what I'm saying? Anybody work with somebody you don't like or ever have? Yeah. And you know what? It doesn't make any difference anymore. Yes. Good. Thank you, Francine. <laughs> you can't let that get in the way anymore. I mean, it doesn't make any difference whether you like them or not. You just got to collaborate. We got to work together. You know, I mean, Trump doesn't like Nancy Pelosi. Great. Good. Okay. We don't like each other. So that, so we don't talk. And that's why we're where we're at. We got to talk like or not. So synergy um, is also about giving up the need to compete. Now, who, who here considers themselves somewhat competitive? Who, have you ever been? Yes, Crystal, thank you. Yeah, sure, it's, it's normal. It, it, it's it's, it's kind of human to want to compete. I used to teach uh, uh, tennis and uh, I'd, I'd warm kids up and, you know, first, second, five-year-old, six-year-old, doesn't make, you know, I mean, nobody had to teach them that. It's like, I say, okay, we're gonna have a race and, and they're always wanting to win. I mean, they, they, they want to step over the line and I go, no, 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 you got us to all start behind the same line. And, and then there's this guy and oh no, he steps over the line because he wants to get a head start because he wants to win. Nobody had to teach him that, right? He just wants to win. So we grow up kind of thinking the answer is to compete. And maybe what we need to grow into is not to compete, but to collaborate. And maybe to even collaborate with people we don't like. This is, this is a scary one. Uh, and, um, and, and if there's anything that is a little bit revolutionary about what we're talking about today is, is I'm, I'm saying the competition will fade away as a, as a, a way of doing business and a way of uh, um, 
living on planet Earth. It, it, we won't need to make America great again. We won't need to compete with China. We won't need to compete. It, we won't need to. What we'll need to do is collaborate. And we'll need to work together, all the parts, all the parts. And so I want you to think at work where you're at and write down this question if you're willing to. Write down this question. Am I competing with somebody at work? Who am I competing with? Why do I feel the need to compete? I guess that's more than one question. <laughs> what, would I, what would it look like if I started to collaborate instead of compete? What would it look like? What would it feel like? Now, does anybody have any kind of response to the, all those questions that you're willing to share? I guess I have um, a comment. Yeah. Um, I feel like sometimes when I want to compete with someone, it's because um, I'm used to doing it a certain way and they bring in a new idea and I'm kind of stuck in my ways. Like it worked well for me, but they have a new idea. So I'm kind of like, why are you changing if it works? But they have a new and better idea or a new way to switch it up. So I think that's why I have a challenging time sometimes with it. God bless you, Lydia. That is gorgeous. That is beautiful. Oops. That is awesome. Who else, Kara? Yeah, I just wanted to piggyback off of that and say that sometimes for me, it feels like it's based out of insecurity. And I, I suppose I could expand on that a little bit. Um, kind of what, what Lydia said too, newer ideas or different ways of thinking that may potentially challenge my, the way that I'm doing something. Beautiful, beautiful. Hi, Crystal. Beautiful, that's awesome. Anybody else? Those are really great. Uh, feel, you know, anybody else feel something like you notice, like, you know, competitive and, and, and maybe even share a little, if you can, what it feels like to be competitive versus collaborative. Anything like feelings, like you notice something about how it makes you like, even in your body, what your what happens to your body when you are always wanting to compete or be right or do it your way. I can tell it based on not being a competitive person. When yeah. I'm with someone that's competitive, I find it very exhausting. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And Good. not that it being competitive is a bad thing. Right. There is a really great driver, but well, when they know, don't kind of step back, it's, it's really hard for me to manage and I, they kind of wear me out. Yeah. Yeah, I find that at work, though, when you're not competitive and you're collaborative, it's more fulfilling than being competitive. Um, because if you can collaborate, you actually are more competitive as a whole than competing against each other all the time. Very, very interesting comments, Crystal. Very interesting. So you're, you're kind of getting out of your uh, personal view. And if you collaborate with people at work, it'll make the company, quote unquote, more competitive. But I'm going to take it even farther than that, Crystal, and even asking you to think about what it would be like if the, if the company didn't need to be competitive. If the company could actually be collaborative, if there wasn't any competitors out there, what would it look like and how would it feel and how would you do business? And, and these are questions to, that I'm kind of just offering to open something up. I'm not looking necessarily for an answer. I just want you to kind of like think about that because the whole um, competitive mindset is culturally embedded in all of us. And so it's often very difficult to even imagine a world that's not based in some way, shape, or form on competition. 
So uh, anyway, okay, we got to move on. We're doing great. And let's go to the last one here of our mash, which is our solution to the VUCA world we live in. And the H stands for humane. Humane. And so I just like, again, I, I really appreciate the way everybody just kind of shared and kind of fleshed out what it is to be agile. What comes to your mind when you think of the term humane? Francine, compassion. Oh, Francine, gosh, you are knocking it out. Thank you, Francine. Who else? Maybe thinking of other people as family instead of competition. So just okay. all people. Okay, thinking of other people as family instead of competition. Beautiful, who else? Thank you, Luke. What comes to mind when you hear the word humane? Kara? For me, it kind of speaks to empathy and being yep. able to put yourself in someone else's shoes. Yes, good. Empathy, put yourself in someone else's shoes. So this is Pam from a, from a, a business standpoint that you're people centric, that you're thinking about things from a customer view. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Pam, great. To hear from you, thank you. Where do you work, Pam? I'm at Brian uh, Medical Center. Great. Thank you so much. Well, this MASH model should work pretty good for a medical center. <laughs> yep, actually, I'm looking at it, except for the part about competition, because then we'd be socialized medicine, so there. Oh, interesting. So. I don't want to go down a, a, a you know a real deep rabbit hole, but I really am interested that that's what that brought up. So, do you mind saying a little bit more about socialized medicine? Um, actually, I was more thinking when you were talking about your question was if there wasn't competition in in our world, what. Yeah look like and feel like and I just went well I'd be socialized medicine okay so so competition in my world keeps us keeps us on the cutting edge of of making sure that we're meeting customer needs that we're looking at market share that we're looking at the greatest technology um, that we're elevating our game with our um, patients and families um, excellent I'm so glad I asked you that. So that's that's an incredibly rich kind of what I'll call mental map for competition, where Pam's taken um, what could be negative, uh, uh, you know, competition, but actually showing how for her competition keeps uh, keeps the you know um, Brian on the cutting edge. Uh, elevating our game and all that. And I guess my question, Pam, would be, could you create a, a competitive collaborative model that would that would do the same or, or how would you do that? So um, we actively um, create some scenarios where we have partnerships either in the community or with other places. Um, where, where there's uh, agreements about what folks will do and how we'll help. So in our world, we actually are doing a good job about, um, about being invited to help other medical, smaller medical centers, critical access hospitals, 
um, and helping them either with resource management. And so the whole concept of, of more partnerships on that end is the in-between. Beautiful. Thank you so much. And Crystal, thank you for joining us with your camera. I see you nodding your head a little bit and, and now you're sitting there with this pensive uh, look on your face. And I'm just wondering um, if something that Pam has said has stimulated something for you. Well, I think we always have to think of the bigger picture mm -hmm. with all of this. And, you know, I'm in the dental world and it's, you know, at the end of the day, it's about the patient, you know, and so everything we do, it's not about me or them, it's ultimately about the patient. So I think what she was just, you know, talking about with um, helping other people improve and helping others um, do things at a more efficient way and ultimately better for the patient is a huge goal for a lot of us in, in the medical world, so. Awesome. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you for being here. All right. So um, the, the whole notion of, um, of this presentation today is um, everybody wants to know what to do when we don't know what to do. <laughs> and so the beautiful thing about this presentation is it doesn't address that. I don't know what to do when I don't know what to do. <laughs> and I can't help you know what to do when you don't know what to do. But here's what I can help you with. What I can help you with is who you are. At your core, who you are when you're in a situation that occurs like a VUCA type of situation, a volatile, uncertain, complex, and ambiguous situation. And because it's who you are that's going to carry the day. And what I'm suggesting is that who you are is a character or a characteristic. And so what I'm calling this MASH uh, model is a collaborative characteristic, not a competitive advantage. So that's where I'm drawing a little distinction you know, everybody wants to have a competitive advantage. And I say, why? Why do we want it? Because we want to win. I say, why? Well, why do you want to win? Well, then I, I feel good. <laughs> okay, well, here, what if we could all win? What if we could all win, Luke, every one of us? Um, well, it would force us to find new challenges, basically. Yeah. New ways to enrich challenge. our lives. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. And the challenge might be, how do we all win? How do we find a world that works for everybody with nobody left out? It's a pretty good question. How do we all win? So what are the collaborative characteristics that it would take to create an environment where everyone can win? And what I'm suggesting is the, the, the collaborative characteristics start with, with being a MASH unit, personally being a MASH unit, like, like who you are is your mobile, agile, synergistic, and humane, that that's who you are in the world. And then as you're that, you start to coagulate with people around you that also have those qualities, those characteristics. And so... Crystal, the people you start working with, you start noticing that they're more mobile, agile, synergistic, and humane because you are, and they're kind of feeding off of you. And the same with you, Lydia, when you get in one of those situations where it's, hey, wait a minute, my idea is a lot better than yours, where all of a sudden you give that puppy up and you go, hey, you know what? That's a good idea. I, I run with that. Let's explore that even more. So then you become more synergistic. And then when, as you become more synergistic, the people around you do, you start to affect and it starts to ripple out and it might just be your little department and then it might go to your, your whole company. And before you know it, you're collaborating with former competitors. We got a real interesting competition going on right now. Who's going to come up with the first vaccine? <laughs> it's amazing to watch. 
And Russia yesterday said, we got 20 countries wanting our vaccine. And so, oh man, it's like the race to the moon. Oh, forget the race to the moon. It's a race to the vaccine to cure the COVID. It's all the same. It's all the same game. It's the competition game. And what I'm suggesting is it's okay. You can play that game. Good for you. I don't think it's as much fun or as effective. I really don't. And it's not as creative. When you're competing, it's a little harder to create than when you're collaborating. We've collaborated on this webinar, and I thank you so much for doing that. You know, everybody is pitched in. It's phenomenal. And this is kind of what it looks like. And hopefully it's Hopefully there's some kind of a feeling you're getting while we're doing this, like, hey, this is fun. Yeah, we could solve something if we work together. If we were mobile and agile and synergistic and humane. <laughs> if we could just kind of figure that out, that'd be awesome. All right, so we've, we've talked about um, two of the four letter words that I promised we would talk about. And now we're gonna get to the last two of the four letter words. And then we're gonna wind it up with the five letter word. And there will be bonus points for anybody that can chat what the five letter word is going to be. So if you can figure out while I'm going through the two four letter words, what the five letter word is gonna be, put it in the chat or just raise your hand or jump up and down and let us know that you've got it. So I'm giving you a hint, it's a five letter word It's on the other side of this little thing that says peak performance on it. It's right over here on the other side. But before that, I'm gonna to get to the four letter words. Remember now, chat or just let me know, yell it out, first person wins a prize. Oh, there it is. Francine's jumped in with her first guess, it's prize. Beautiful, Francine. That is not the answer, but oh, there's Julie. Julie Vasey's getting in here. Uh, Francine, that is not the answer, but you are on the right track. So keep it up. Okay, here's the here's the the first four letter word, and I want everybody to just tell me what comes to your mind when you see the word. Okay, there's the word, and what comes to your mind? First things that come to your mind, please. This, this is only gonna work if you guys share. Go. To fill a need. Good, next. Come off mute or chat. Oh, here we go, necessary. Oh, good one, Sue. Sue, you are really, oh God, I love it. Sue, necessary, excellent. From Crystal, constant, good. Thank you, Crystal. Put it in the chat, I can see it all. Just put it in from you to all panelists. Chat away or share verbally, whatever is fun for you. Lydia's working on something, I can tell. Are you chatting, Lydia? Oh, here we go, from Crystal. Get it done, from Roxy. Making a living, beautiful. Getting it done. Thank you, Roxy. Making a living. Love that one, love that one. One more at least, one more. One more share, one more share. Okay, here we go. Oh, Francine again, serving, beautiful. Okay, that's that's awesome. Now I'm gonna put up another card with another four letter word. And I want you to do the same thing. I want you to just write what first thing that comes to your mind, ready? There it is, another four letter word. Okay, oh, Francine, fun. Excellent, thank you, Francine. Francine is quick on the trigger there. 
you got quick, agile fingers there, Francine. Enjoy. Oh, yeah. Enjoy. Thank you, Roxy. Sue, necessary too. Oh, interesting. Necessary too. Love that one, Sue. Thank you. Who else? Come on, there's only so much time left to have all this fun. Pleasure. Pam says vacation. Interesting. <laughs> Interesting. Thank you, Pam. That's a good one. I, I remember growing up, vacation seemed to be fun for me, but my mom never seemed to be having fun. I mean, that, that was something I clearly remember. We were always doing something wrong. Oh, wait a minute, Crystal. Ding, 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 ding. Look at Crystal. So who, who can figure out the word? Who can figure out the magic word that's five letters? Come on, come on. Kara doesn't count. You know the word. No, Kara, no, no, no. Come on, come on, start guessing. I love prize, but that's not it. I'll give you a hint. It starts with P. That's good. You guys are, you guys are, you're, you're on to something. It starts with P. Five letters. Crystal. Crystal is furrowing her brow. She's thinking. Crystal, Crystal. Oh, I, oh my goodness. I, I meant Crystal stir. Stir it up. Is it stir? What? How do you Club. pronounce your what? Stewart. 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 Sorry. That's okay. It's all good. Stewart it up with, with Crystal Stewart. Okay, good. Um, she's Her brain's going, but she hasn't got it yet. Boy, I hope Julie pipes in one of these days. Come on, Julie. Five letter word starts with P. You're going to, you're going to have fun when you get it. And you're going to win a prize. Oh, 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 Pam. Pivot. I love it, Pam. Not the word. Good effort. All right. I'm going to throw in another uh, clue. All the letters are in these two words. All the letters are in these two words. Okay. All the letters are in those two words. Crystal Fangmeyer's got to look like I know what he's talking about. No, she stumped. Darn it. Francine, you're the stud back there. You're the one who knows. Come on, Francine. I know this is awkward and I know you guys just want me to give you the answer. And that's what, oh, I, I'm terrible. Get another coach. Oh, Roxy, power. Thank you, Roxy. Now, Roxy, there's no, wait a minute. Power, is, are those all in there? P. Wait. That's good. P-O-W. No, there's no E. Sorry, I don't think there's an E in there. Where's the E, Roxy? No E, sorry, not power, but I like it. It sounded good, good, thank you, Roxy. <laughs> oh, this is terrible, we're almost out of time, we don't even have our magic word. I can't even wrap it up. Oh boy. Does anybody want another hint? Oh, 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 play work dash no idea. Okay, so what would you do? That's you, is that you, Dana, or is that? Um, um, that was Luke? me. I, I'm trying to put words together out of that. I'm stuck. Okay, so put the two together, Luke. Put them together. Put your, put your headphone now. We're going we're gonna to birth a new word out of you. Put it down. Okay, so, so no, put it like so you, I can hear you. Oh, you can hear me. Oh, good. Yeah. Okay, so put those two words together. What do you come up with? I'm giving you a hint. A good use of time? I mean, no, no, no. I, it's one word. It has five letters. Come on. I couldn't come Every, up. I couldn't come up with any real words. Oh, we'll make up an unreal word. Oh, Crystal's got one. Plowy. Thank you. Plowy. I love that one. Not quite. Come on, keep going. You're going to see why I'm doing this and why it's so hard. 
because we're actually creating something as we as we speak and somebody's going to have what we call that moment when it all kind of comes together and literally and i may give hints but when it does you're going to have something called an aha moment and then it'll be like well sure of course it's a five letter word it starts with p and it it, it combines play with work Oh, oh, Crystal, you're only one letter off. Plark. Come on, Crystal. Retype. You're one letter off. That's a hint. You're one letter off. Plark. Crystal's our winner. Crystal, you win a prize. And some of you are thinking, wait a minute, that's not a word. Who's thinking, wait a minute, that's not fair, that's not a word? Come on. Yes, Pam, thank you. Crystal, yes, Luke. Well, you know what? It is a word. Uh, and it's um, it's what I call the secret. It's the secret to how to live in a VUCA world. It's to plurk. It's to combine your play with your work. Because when you're playing, you're having fun. You're enjoying it. It's pleasurable. And one of you even came up and said, making work fun. And that's, that's, that's really what it's all about. Because if we can make work fun, does anybody, does anybody question whether I'm having fun? Is anybody saying, oh, he's not having any fun? Crystal's going, no, he's having fun. It's pretty clear he's having fun. But guess what, Crystal? I'm working. This is what I do for a living. And I'm having fun. I'm plurking. And so um, a little history about the word plurk, it actually, I stumbled on it uh, several years ago. And as far as I know, it was invented by a, a nun in, uh, in Iowa. And, uh, and her name was Sister Carita. She's from Iowa, but it was out in uh, California. And she wrote a book called uh, Learning by Heart, Learning by Heart. And if you look up Sister Carita Kent, and you Google the word plurk, uh, you'll find out about it. It's just a little blur, but she talks about how we need a third word, that, it, that, that, that we've got to combine the two to really advance as a, as, as a civilization. Really, that's what she said. And so Kara and I are currently working on a book. It's called The Joy of Plurk. And uh, we're, we're collaborating together on this uh, because to me, what really is going to make a difference no matter what the circumstances are, is that we need to be plurkers. We need to be people who are, uh, um, you know, mobile, agile, synergistic, humane, and, and human beings like to have fun. You know what? And if, and if we have fun, we're more creative. And if we're more creative, we can solve things that haven't been solvable. And that's really the opportunity is, is you become a person that, that can create something that's, that, that solves something that's never been solved. And you become a person that creates something that meets a need that's always been there. And not only you, but your companies, all of your companies create things and collaborate and, and really make an impact. So that's it for our, our webinar. Um, if you have anything you wanna ask, uh, I'm very willing to stay after. I know many of you have to leave. If you want to stay uh, for a few minutes and ask a few questions, feel free. And if not, Dana, do you have anything else? I do not. Otherwise, except to thank everyone for joining us today and keep an eye out. We'll probably do more of these throughout the rest of this year and into 2021. So everybody have a great Thursday. Thank you all.